Hey friends, it's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today we're going to be doing our first full garden tour of the year and it's been a busy couple of days. We had essentially nothing planted. If you had been here on Wednesday of last week when we had temperatures still in the 30s at night and now it's 80s and we're well into the 50s at night and pretty much the entire garden is planted. So let's start with our raised beds. We have three raised beds that we put in the ground two years ago now. So behind me we have our three raised beds and a couple random containers. Over here we've got shallots right next to some lovely looking garlic and a little container of mint. Um, and then over behind the, the garlic, we have a dahlia planted under the soil that will come up and bloom and be beautiful. These are yellow and raspberries. I think that's what they're called. This is the second year of having them. Last year we had our first fruit. This year we should have a lot of fruit because I'm seeing a lot of little baby blossoms getting ready to open. So I'm really looking forward to that, and this bed is actually going to be entirely raspberries going forward. Another visitor. <laughs> Hi, Sagey. Hi. Next to me in this bed is our pepper bed with random volunteer calendulas. We've got jalapenos. What's the other pepper we've got? Uh, Sunbright. No, the other hot one. Oh, um, Serrano's. We got jalapenos and serranos that we actually picked up at a little greenhouse because I forgot to get seeds for those this year. And they're the small looking ones. The nice big looking ones are sunbrights and a couple different kinds of bells. And we also have a few Chinese five color peppers. And then behind me is our lovely chai book bush, chai bush, which is full of blossoms. You can eat the blossoms, you can eat the plants all of it it's delicious i'm gonna make some pesto with it later this week and i've also been topping it onto pizza and other delicious things in here we have parsley that overwintered and came back this is a um, curly parsley and sage that also overwintered and has spread and then we have little baby cilantros that reseeded themselves as well as some parsley that reseeded and a bunch of different dill i planted dill two years ago and I've never started seed since. I've never purchased dill since. I just let it seed itself and it produces amazingly. This plant next to me here is pretty cool and you might not have heard of it or you might maybe have, maybe. It's a hardy kiwi. We've got three of them on this cattle panel trellis. Um, two males and a female or I might have had that switch. We might have two females and a male. Whatever it is, the varieties we have need cross pollination. So these guys will produce a little grape-sized kiwi-like fruit. Uh, potentially this year, likely next year. This is the second year we planted them last spring. Okay, so that is the raised beds, kind of the smallest part of our garden. Now we're gonna go talk about the hugo culture and we'll go into our no-till bright. Yeah. Are you still recording? I am. Okay, so we live in upstate New York. We're in zone 6A. This year we've behaved a lot more like 5B. It's been really, really cold until this week, like the past five days, as I mentioned earlier. So that gives you a little bit of context. Essentially, nothing was ready to be planted other than your cold hardy crops until like Wednesday or Thursday. So it was just like cram time to get everything in as quickly as possible because we don't have the longest growing season and a lot of things like tomatoes and peppers and all of your cucurbits need a good number of days to produce. So we have hygge culture here. Hygge culture is basically a German term for mound culture or something like that, essentially, right? Um, it's a permaculture method of, of laying down wood and rotted wood and then adding different layers of organic material, finally topping it off with just a little bit of soil and planting in it. Over time, all of those layers of organic matter break down and feed the soil, and you have tons of moisture retention and a beautiful, cool place to plant. I love this bed. I kind of use it as my like smodgepodge bed where I plant 
all different kinds of things like flowers and celery and kales and we've got onions and we have some perennials we've all kinds of things in this bed what you'll see right here some of my favorite things it's egyptian walking onion it's a perennial onion that sends off these really cool seeds and it will walk so as you see right there next to it it walked itself over and it will continue to spread you can take the little seed pods and you can just plant them all over the place and they'll come up and produce tons and tons of onion and here you can see all of these little baby onions are egyptian walking onions i just took the little seeds and put them in the ground and they're doing awesome they came up super fast lots of different things in here i'll show you guys details in a hugo culture update soon We've got 450 by six, five? Six, yeah. 50 by six foot beds in here. And I'm really happy with the size of the beds. I, I think they're perfect. I love that we can have a big diversity of plants in each bed and we don't have to follow any sort of row system or anything like that. We more approach it using like a block style planting, <laughs> clearing out an area, planting, putting the mulch back, things like that. So we're trying to kill off some of the grass here so we can put down wood chips. That's what you'll see the tarping for, but don't mind that. Behind me, we have fava beans surrounded by onions that I started from seed. And we have some brassicas that I started from seed, as well as a lot of garlic. I think there's like 325 garlic plants in this bed, a mix of soft neck and hard neck. We're gonna have lots of garlic. I think we're gonna do like a mini cash crop this year with the garlic, because we don't need 400 heads of garlic. But we do love garlic. Okay, so let's walk back down this row and I'll show you what's, what's in here. I should mention that everything you see in this bed, we either started from seed in the house or we direct sowed seeds. None of my direct sowed seeds have really come up yet. So almost everything is a transplant that we put in the ground. And I'll point out where we direct sowed a number of things this week. So over here on the left, in this section, we have broccoli and cheddar cauliflower. And then on the other side of the trellis, I have four tomatillo plants, as well as a few tomato stragglers that we didn't fit in our nightshade alley. And then on this side over here, you can see there's some hardware cloth on the ground, which looks a little bit odd. So the hardware cloth is actually preventing the birds from eating those squash seeds that we planted. We have this big, beautiful pine tree next to us and the birds love to hide in there and fly down and try to steal the seeds. So I have Mexican gherkin cucumbers along the trellis. And then I have four different kinds of like a zucchini squash. Lebanese one, um, which is our favorite. It's like a Lebanese white squash. It's really delicious. Has like a nutty flavor to it. A Cozelle zucchini, which is a smaller striped zucchini. Black Beauty zucchini, and this little Desi squash, which is like a little small round squash. This section looks empty, but it's actually filled with a white butter, butter potato. Um, so you can see some of them coming up amidst a few different weeds as well, but the potatoes are coming up right here in this section. Both of these beds in this section as well as the one next to us are mulched with a rotted hay that we take right out of our goat pen. So it's covered in like goat manure, you know, they peed on it, the sun's baked it, the rains come down on it. So it doesn't have a lot of weed seeds because it's been rotting and sitting out for, you know, many, many months. And it's amazing. It's basically acts as a slow release fertilizer all summer long and just continues to feed the soil. So we don't have to fertilize these beds at all. The goat manure fertilizes, the hay breaking down fertilizes. It maintains moisture so we don't water them. It's like, it's amazing. We love having the rotted hay for that reason. In this section right here, we just cleared aside the hay 
we put down some compost from our compost pile as well as some, some compost that we purchased. My favorite is bumper crop, a bagged compost from Costa Maine. And then I planted three <laughs> groups of corn, like a block style of corn. I have glass gem corn. I have a popping corn. I think it's Italian popping corn. And then I have a sweet corn. So this will all be just corn. And then in here, I have some determinate tomatoes. These guys, we will not prune and we'll just use the cages as support. I need one more cage. And we have four ground cherries. In the blank spots around those plants, I have more potatoes. And this guy right here, this, this is my favorite plant in the entire garden. This is my perennialized artichoke plant, which many people would say that you can, cannot plant artichokes in upstate New York. It's too cold. They won't survive in zone six. They won't perennialize. And I didn't actually plan for it to come back, but I did mulch it heavily along with the other five that I had planted. This one survived and it's just coming back beautifully. Um, it, you can see some, a little bit of diatomaceous earth on it. I'm protecting it from, from slugs. It's not really working that well, so we're going to try a couple different things. But ultimately it's growing so fast that the slugs, the slugs can't really harm it. Perennial artichokes will produce every year. Whereas if you plant an artichoke in year one, you may or may not get fruit setting on it. So I'm really excited because that means we should have artichokes this year, probably in the late summer or fall. I don't know. I have no idea. is a little bit of a hodgepodge mix as well. Not only of what's in it, but also the mulch that you'll see used. In this first, like 30%, there are some wood chips down, a very light layer of wood chips. I decided I do not like planting in wood chips my annuals. So we're going to be kind of nixing wood chips used for annuals and strictly use them for perennials going forward. But before I made that decision, we put more wood chips on this bed. And then we took them out and I planted and we're going to go grab some rotted hay from the goat pen and mulch around what I've planted. You'll see some hot peppers. We got Tabasco and Chinese five color, which are just beautiful ornamentals, but also you can make delicious things like hot sauce. And I, I love spicy peppers, especially since I'm pregnant. I have been obsessed with spicy foods. So I'm really excited for hot peppers this year. I think I'll probably put them on everything. We have some more ground cherries, three. I'm really happy with how I started my ground cherries this year. They, they're huge and they already have fruit set on them. Some radishes that I let go to seed. I'm gonna save the seeds from those. This is going to be a cucumber teepee. So we just grabbed some sticks from our woods that we had chopped down or you know cleared out from fallen trees. And we cut them to a similar height. We're gonna get some sticks and tie them up so that they provide like a ladder for the cucumbers to grow. And I planted two kinds. I planted Market Moor 76, I think, and then a New York variety of cucumbers, both slicers. I still need to get a hold of some pickling cucumber seeds. I forgot to get those this year. This little strip of soil that you can see here is where I planted okra. I love okra. I had it for the first time last year. And I just direct seeded it this year because we've had a nice hot week. It should grow pretty quick. We should get some by the end of the summer. It's not quite as prolific in, in upstate New York where it doesn't get as hot as in the south. I also have some, some kale over next to the radish and some carrots that probably aren't going to be very good because it's been so hot this week. Um, but I'm just letting them, letting them be, seeing if they'll produce a root. And if they don't, we can juice the tops or we can give it to our bunnies. This is a very small low tunnel. So I have small little metal poles and I turned them into an arch. That's what they're made for. They're made specifically for this purpose. And then I took some row cover and put it over and used rocks to hold the row cover down. But we'll take a peek in here and I'll show you what's going on.
I have seven eggplant in here. I'm very, very proud of this eggplant. I started it from seed. The reason we're using a low tunnel here for the eggplant is to keep the flea beetles away. I probably don't need it because they're so happy, healthy, and large to begin with. So the flea beetles won't really stand a chance, but I want them to be pretty and I don't want them to be ravaged on by an army of flea beetles. Flea beetles live in the soil, but they'll move from location to location. So I haven't planted, planted eggplant here before. I haven't seen any flea beetles here in this soil. So I go ahead and I plant them here. What will happen if I didn't have the row cover? So flea beetles that are obsessed with eggplant and other nightshades, but especially eggplant, they'll find the eggplant, they'll live in the soil, and then you can't do anything about them. You can't cover it at that point. They're already there. So if you can get your eggplant covered and protected before they find them, you're good to go. I'll probably take it off in like less than a month. Okay, this is this bed is completely packed. It's so full. Nothing else is fitting in this bed. We've got potatoes in here, right in this front section. And then we have 48 tomatoes. There's 24 on each side of the trellis. They're staggered. They're about 18 inches apart on center. And the reason we're planting them so close is one, because this soil is really rich. It's fertilized with the goat manure, so we can afford to plant things closer. The other reason is we're gonna prune to a single vine or, or a double vine, one or two. So they're, they're gonna have a lot of airflow. And then the third reason is we live in upstate New York. The humidity and heat isn't as much of an issue here. So you, we don't get hit quite as hard with tomato diseases as quickly as you might in the South. Huh. I also have these vertical trellises. We've got six vertical trellises and I almost entirely planted them with squash this year because I found last year the squash gets so full, so beautiful, such nice coverage, adds a lot of height to the garden. Whereas other things like melons never really grow like higher than here and pole beans take forever to fill out, at least in my experience last year. So I filled them almost exclusively with small winter squashes and small pumpkins. We have like, I think five or six different varieties of tomatoes, mostly slicers, a lot of heirlooms, and then about 50% or more are paste tomatoes. I did Italian paste and opaca paste. Our favorite cherry, which is honey drop cherry tomato, and a, a couple fun varieties of heirloom slicers like copia, um, which is a yellow orange that I've just loved for years and green zebra and my peppers are amazing this year I I figured out the magic to starting peppers just like the eggplants and the tomatoes but especially the peppers they're so dark they have so many leaves they've branched out on their own I didn't top them they're developing tons of blossoms they're a great size I didn't start them too early I didn't start them until March I have mostly bells I have a sweet bell sun bright and I think some other bells. And then I've got some poblanos, I have paprikas, I have big red. Oh, Jimmy Nardellos. That's pretty much covers a rose it. rose con pollo. Oh, rose con pollo. A banana, which is a, a sweet. Banana. Banana. I think that's it. You have most of them, yeah. Okay, you know what I forgot to do is tell you what's on these trousers, but I'm gonna tell you right now. And I labeled everything this year. Everything I planted, I've labeled, which is huge for me because I am a spontaneous gardener. Trying to remember to do anything on a system is very difficult, but I did it. So I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back. And I've got um, Waltham, Waltham butternut here. So like a medium, small butternut squash. Over here, I have a Sibley, Sibley squash, which is actually developed in the city local to us, Rochester, New York. It's actually a really cool looking squash. It's blue, it's pretty big. So I'm excited to see how that looks and how they look together. I don't know why I planted two different kinds on one trellis, but it should look pretty cool. And then I'll just tell you the one right in front of me and the one back there that you can't see. This one has honey nut squash, which is like the best, the best winter squash in my opinion, by far. If you don't know what it is, Go ahead and look it up. It's so delicious. 
And then behind Chris, my favorite looking squash and my favorite tasting pumpkin. It's called Jardale pumpkin. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's blue on the outside and then it changes to orange if you bring it inside and it will last for like six months. I still have one inside and it's like nine months later. It's so sweet and creamy and dark orange when you cut it open. The seeds are delicious. It's an heirloom pumpkin. It's beautiful. I mean, it's just this blue, beautiful pumpkin. If you see my permaculture garden tour video from last year, the pumpkin that I'm looking up at is a Jardale pumpkin. So that's my favorite one. That's why I put it in the very front trellis. This trellis is where I planted pole beans. I planted Kentucky uh, Wonder pole beans on this side. And then on this side I planted, they're called Triumpho Violetto. They're a purple pole bean. I didn't buy a lot of pole beans this year. I bought mostly bush beans. So I just had two varieties to plant. And this bed is pretty much empty with a few exceptions because as I mentioned, I hate planting in wood chips. I hate it even more now that I'm like pregnant and don't want to like do tons of bending and digging. It's like exhausting planting in wood chips. It's not as exhausting if you have like a nice loose sandy soil, but our soil is naturally very, it's loamy, but it's pretty compact. It's really rich, but it's hard. And the wood chips have not done a good job loosening it up because it stays so wet. Whereas the hay, the rotted hay has really loosened the soil and it's so easy to plant in because you just brush the hay aside and you put a seed in. You try to brush the wood chips aside and it's just like inches and inches and inches of wood chips. And then the wood chips accidentally get mixed in with the soil and then you're just trying to make sure they don't get mixed because if they get mixed, then you have nutrient deficiencies. Um, I know it works really well in a lot of contexts and I definitely think it's worth giving it a shot, especially for perennials but I am not wanting to finish this bed. I think we're gonna move this into a perennial bed. I'm gonna maybe find a fruit tree or two and maybe some berry bushes and fill in this bed with some perennials. I love the idea of having annuals and perennials sharing a similar space. This trellis has butter, butter cup squash, which tastes like a combination between a potato and a butternut squash. Also really delicious. I think it's my second favorite next to honey nut. There's butternut, buttercup, honey nut, lots of squashes that sound very similar. It's easy to get confused. And finally, this has baby bear pumpkins on it. Or no, sorry, take that back. This has, wait, no, this one says Jarredale. What? But it also <laughs> says, I think I thought it was Jarredale and meant to put that over there. Because this one, this is the, um, Sugar pie. Okay. Apparently I mislabeled. I said I didn't do that, but happens. So this one is sugar pie pumpkin. So we'll use these to make uh, pumpkin pie puree. We make puree and then we freeze it in mason jars. Okay. I do have a few things because I went through the struggle and I planted them. And then that's when I realized I'm never doing this again. Just kidding. I probably will do it again. But we have some celery that I started from seed. It's a little baby, little baby celery. Some beets that I started indoors, a mix of red, you know, like bull's blood beet and golden beets. Some red onions, they're a Rosa de Milano red onion. And then a few little baby cabbage starts. my perennial herb garden and tea garden as I like to call it. Um, everything in here that you see was planted last year. And I haven't planted anything else yet. Not everything is thriving yet because this was no-till. We didn't add any compost to this bed, just wood chips and just planted in the dirt below the wood chips or the soil below the wood chips, which was hard, which was wet, which was, was compacted. But now that it's in its second year, things are starting to thrive a little bit more and it will just get better year after year as the perennials spread out, fill out, and I continue to add new perennials to the bed. I have oregano in here. I have thyme. This beautiful plant is yarrow. It's starting to spread itself 
quite a bit. Winter savory here, a lavender. I have echinacea in here. Chamomile, which came back this year in two different spots. A little baby chive bush, which is probably going to start competing with the giant chive I have over there. Bee balm, which you can use for tea. Um, and it, the pollinators love the bee balm. It has beautiful, this one has beautiful purple red flowers, like a magenta flower. Sorrel, which is a spinach like perennial green. Really good flavor. This one is a, I think this was a lemon, it has a kind of a lemony flavor as well. And then behind me, I have three different varieties of lavender. They're all coming back. Some more echinacea, lemon balm, and I have some foxglove flowers, which should be really pretty in not too long. Okay, our last section, which is almost entirely new this year, actually almost entirely new this week. Let's go over and I'll show you that. And I'm really looking forward to working in this space. Could feel it in my bones. There was something going on. First you'll see we have a lot of weed pressure in this area. We're gonna be working on that. But these little guys are strawberries. So we have a lot of strawberries in here. Our goal is to get rid of the grass, mulch heavily, and let the strawberries just take over this space. And we have three perennials. We have a Current bush, a gooseberry, <laughs> current gooseberry, and a medlar tree, which I showed in a recent video. So the area where we're standing right now, the roosters, these four buddies, were all in here for about nine months or six months at least. And by the time that they were gone, this area had very few weeds and was pretty much just a little bit of soil with a little bit of hay on top. Well, a lot of soil with a little bit of hay on top. So it was ready to be turned into a garden but it was really, really compact because this area was our first major gardening mistake three years ago where we tilled it all up. I'm not a fan of tilling and definitely have seen the consequences of, of it for us. I know it works for some people in, in many contexts. It does not work for our soil. It gets very hard really fast, really dry really fast. So instead of tilling up this area again, we built these miniature berms which essentially means it's like a raised bed with outsides. And then the we topped it off with some compost from our bunnies on the outside, and then on the top, some bumper crop compost. In this one right here, I planted two different kinds of watermelon, one called Sugar Baby, and another called Honey Island, which is yellow. In this bed, I have all of my yellow onions. They're doing really well. And it was so easy to plant in here. And in this bed, I have two different kinds of cantaloupe. The Sherilyn variety can be eaten both as honeydew or as cantaloupe, depending on when you harvest it. And then I have a variety called Grease, Grease something. I don't, I didn't label it perfectly. So I have those two. And we have two more right now. We're gonna keep going. We'll have probably four here. So we have a few beds and these are gonna be where I'm gonna to top them off with compost and then we're gonna plant sweet potatoes and bush beans in these sections. So we've got our brooms and swales, we've got our wood chip perennial beds, we have our Ruth Stout style rotted hay beds, our hugo culture bed and our raised beds. I love, I love mixing and matching. I find it really fun to see how different things do in different contexts. So that's where our garden's at as of May, 25th 2020 and I can't wait to show you it come to life over the next few months I think this is gonna be a really successful year I'm sure we'll have lots of failures it's only our second year of no-till last year was a total adventure a total experiment and we still had tons of harvests so I can't wait to see what the garden produces this year thanks for being here and I'll see you guys next week in our weekly garden tour